Stephen Hall, Good, Better, Best. Good, Better, Best, Stephen Hall. Are you being the best audience member you can be? <laughs> Are you actively listening to the speakers? Are you being respectful to those around you? Most importantly, are you going to laugh at my jokes? <laughs> By doing your best, I'm not talking about needlessly working your fingers to the bone or sacrificing yourself or your health to get a result. I'm simply talking about doing everything that you know to do and can do in that moment. I started learning about my best at a fairly young age. In elementary school, I joined the Boy Scouts. The Boy Scout host begins with, on my honor, I will do my best. I said the words, and I thought I knew what they meant, but it took a real world lesson to truly grasp them. A teacher asked us to draw a map of Europe, so I grabbed a big atlas and some paper, and using colored pencil, quickly drew the various borders, names, and features. When I got the project returned, I'd made a 95 out of 100. I was so proud that that night I showed it off to my father. He was proud of me. That bolstered my esteem even more. But then he said something that flushed all that pride away. He asked, did you do your best? I made a 95, jerk. <laughs> that part stayed in my head. What I didn't understand at age 11 was that my father wasn't saying that my work wasn't good enough for the grade or that he wasn't proud of me. He was simply asking if I would put my best effort into that project. Somehow he suspected I had not done my best. He was correct. And I felt ashamed. OK, universe, lesson learned. Doing good enough is different than doing your best. It's a good thing I learned my lessons the first time, though. Then I never have to experience that pain again. <laughs> About 10 years later, I traded in my Boy Scout uniform for an Army uniform. It was common for us to practice drill and ceremony by marching around with our rifles. One day, the drill sergeant issued the dreaded command, double time, march, and 250 men began running. It wasn't unusual to run for 15 minutes or so, but after a half hour, I started to worry. <laughs> My knees were screaming because army boots are heavy and anti-ergonomic. <laughs> after an hour, over half of the men had dropped out of formation and were walking on the roadside. After an hour and a half, there were fewer than 250 of us left. That eight pound rifle felt like 80. After two hours, there were fewer than 25 men remaining. My body hurt from my toenails to my eyelashes. <laughs> I thought to myself, this is crazy. I've done better than almost everybody else. Why am I killing myself? And I stepped out of formation and started walking. About 10 paces later, maybe 30 feet, they called the formation to a halt. I could have made it 30 more feet. I wouldn't have quit if they had just told me <laughs> it was only 30 more feet. I caught up to the group, and the drill sergeant overheard me complaining that I dropped out so close to the finish line. He approached me and asked in his warm and kind <laughs> drill sergeant voice, did you do your best, son? Was this a conspiracy universe? <laughs> All right, lesson learned again. Doing better than others is still different than doing my best. A short time after the Army, I traded in my rifle for a wedding ring. My then wife, Linda, loved to watch romantic comedies. I would often hear her call out, let's sit down and watch Love Actually. How about Sleepless in Seattle? 
maybe my best friend's wedding? <laughs> Romantic comedies aren't my first choice in movies because there's just never quite enough car chases, <laughs> explosions, or zombies. <laughs> I gave in a few times, but over the long run, to Linda's disappointment, I most often found something else to do. Years later, I would learn from Gary Chapman's book, Five Love Languages, that Linda wasn't asking for the romantic comedies per se, but quality time. Of course, a marriage is made up of much more than movie choices, but perhaps my failure to do my best with quality time was symptomatic of other problems. I was also failing to do my best with acts of service or words of affirmation, maybe occasional gifts. During one of our many divorce discussions, Linda said that she had tried really hard to make our marriage work. I said I had also. And then she asked, did you do your best? <laughs> I don't know if my marriage would have lasted if I had given more, but I know that I had more to give. If I had truly done my best, I wouldn't be haunted with regrets today. Third time's a charm, universe. I sure hope it only takes three times to learn a lesson. <laughs> that would be nice. Y'all could learn something from my painful mistakes also. Understand that doing good enough is measuring yourself to someone else's standard that may not reflect everything that you can do. Doing better than others is comparing your accomplishments to those of someone else when their accomplishments have nothing to do with your potential. Right? But doing your best is something you know inside when you've truly done it, no matter the actual result or how it compares to others. So don't look back on your life with regret that you quit before you've given it your all. Look back with pride, honor, and peace in your heart, knowing that you did everything that you could. Would you like to start doing your best right now? I'll give you that opportunity by giving me your best applause.